What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about an add-on that comes built into Blender that adds a number of different curve shapes to your tool set. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to enable this add-on, you want to go up to Edit, Preferences, and you want to look for Add Curve extra objects. So you can click on this button right here for a documentation link and basically what that does is that adds a number of curve objects that you can add inside a blender. So if you do a shift A and then you look under curve, notice how you have all of these extra options in here right now. And we can take a look at a few of these. Um, I don't want to get too buried in this because there's a lot of curves, but we can run through them real fast. So the first thing this does is it adds a number of uh, fairly simple objects. So things like angles, where you can add an angle object. You can dictate the number of degrees in that angle. The arc tool allows you to create an arc with a radius. You can adjust the number of sides in your curve and your start and end angle. Notice that if you check on the box for cyclic, that'll close this and it'll add a face in here. If you're in 2D mode, it won't close this in if you're in 3D mode. The circle tool adds a circle. So what's different about this circle from the circle tool that you have in here is it basically is creating a curve object rather than um, a piece of geometry. And that is one thing to note with this is if you tab out of this, right? So everything's closed and then you tab into it and you try to select the face and extrude it, it's not gonna let you do that. Well, the reason why, and you can see how the tools are different is because this is in here as a curve. Meaning if you edit this, your geometry is gonna move along with it. So if you do wanna convert this to normal geometry, you would want to be in object mode, and then just right click, and you would click on convert to mesh. And then once you convert this to a mesh, now it's a regular mesh in here. Notice that some of these have some issues with the way geometry is created in here, and this is obviously not quad geometry. Just be aware that's a thing. Um, in a situation like this, it's probably not that big of a deal, but just be aware that if you do convert that to a mesh, you may see some of those issues. The distance tool allows you to set a line with a length. You can also check the box for length center to center your line on the 3D cursor or uncheck it to start your line on the 3D cursor. The ellipse tool is basically going to create a circle where you can dictate both the length and the width of your circle. The line tool is going to create a line and the only thing that would make this different than maybe uh, adding a vertex and then extruding that would be that you can dictate the length along the x, y, and z axes. The point tool creates a point. This is similar to creating a vertex only if you were to extrude this point notice how if you extrude this point you get a curve rather than a line. So this is all in here as curve geometry. The polygon tool is gonna to allow you to create a polygon where you can dictate the number of sides. So you can adjust the number of sides in here as well as your radius. Notice how if you don't check the box for cyclic, it's not gonna close this. Also, if you want this to be filled in, just mark 2D when you create this. 3D won't fill this in. The rectangle tool is pretty self-explanatory. It creates a rectangle where you can adjust lengths and widths as well as if your edges are rounded off. And then if you want to center this on your 3D cursor, you can check this box right here. The rhomb creates a rhombus. And so the rhombus is going to give you the ability to dictate the width and the length. I believe the way a rhombus is dictated, all of the sides should be the same length. The sector tool is gonna to act a lot like the angle tool that we talked about before. The nice thing about this though, is this one is going to create an angle that comes back to a central radius. So if you mark this as 2D, you can use this to create an arc with the number of sides, a radius, and then a start and end angle. But this one will fill this in by going back to the central point rather than just drawing a line across here. The trapezoid is going to draw a trapezoid, which is basically a rectangular shape where you can dictate the length of both sides as well as the height. So the segment tool is going to create a shape 
based on a central point, but instead of having one radius, it's gonna have two, allowing you to create this shape that's out here that has some distance between here and the radius. So you can adjust the size of those radiuses in order to adjust the size of the shape that's going to be created. So there's also a number of more complex curve profiles that are in here. So under curve, under curve profiles, you can create anything from a regular arc, which is fairly similar to what's up here, to things that are more complex, like arrows. So you can use this to create an arrow inside of your model and you can adjust length and width. And then once you have this kind of set, what you can do is you can just tab out of this or just select these objects and then just move them along this axis. So you can use this to adjust the length right here. And that's one thing I guess I haven't really talked about is when you're using these to create your shapes, make sure that you don't click off of them until your shape has been created. Otherwise, you're going to lose that menu and the ability to edit these. So if I do a shift A here, for example, and let's say I was to add this cogwheel object, if I was to click off of it, notice how I can't make changes to that anymore. So there's a number of other shapes in here as well. So things like this cogwheel is really interesting or um, one of the ones that I really like is there's also the ability to add helixes. So if I was to click on helix right here, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a 3D helix shape. And you can use this and adjust things like the height as well as the width, so how wide that goes. You can also adjust the number of revolutions. So if you wanted this to do three revolutions, for example, you would do 1080. This would suddenly go around in three revolutions instead of just one. You can use the variable to adjust what the top and the bottom of your uh, helix is going to do. So this is very adjustable as well. So there's a lot of interesting shapes in there. I don't wanna get too far down that um, rabbit hole, but you can also check all of those out. So those curve profiles are all in here. The star one is pretty interesting, it allows you to adjust the number of points that are in here. So you can use all of those. Then so there's another number of these where you can create spirals. And so with the spirals function, you can create spirals with several different types. So things like Archimedean, logarithmic. Um, so you can use different functions in order to create these spirals. Then you can adjust these. And then you can adjust those settings to adjust what your spiral does. So in this case, we've got a torus that follows along a spiral. And you can adjust things like height, you can adjust the radius of the circle that's being created, the number of circles that are being created, lots of different things that you can adjust in here if you're looking to create that kind of a shape. So I can also add things that follow along meshes. So for example, if I select my default model, I do a Shift A and I go down to Knots, there's an option in here to add Celtic links that follow along with my object. And these aren't exactly aligned. Um, you can see how this is dropping this in at my 3D cursor location. So probably what you would wanna do because this places this at the 3D cursor location. So you'd probably wanna do a shift S and put your cursor to selected before you run this. But then if you run this, you can see how this is gonna take those Celtic links and it's gonna use your model in order to adjust those. And so you can adjust like the bevel depth in here if you want to, to make these, uh, to make the uh, tubes that are created larger or smaller. You can see how you can use this to make curves that actually follow along with objects, make some really interesting shapes by doing that. So there's some other tools in here that do similar things. So for example, the spiral fit is gonna wrap this in a spiral and um, you can adjust the resolution on that. You know, and this is just one of those where you kind of want to play around with it. So you could use the bevel, for example, to um, add something to this. So we could set this at like 0 0.01. Then you can add some additional spires in here. So you could use this in order to wrap an object. Um, again, a lot of it depends on what you're trying to do and you do have to mess around with the settings, but it is still kind of a cool function to have inside a blender. So there's also some different kind of knots in here that aren't necessarily affected by your object. So I could add like a torus knot in here. Well, the torus knot allows me to adjust the number of revolutions in here. You can also set if it spins and really anything about that torus knot. So if you're looking to create this kind of geometry, um, this is gonna be a great tool for that. So you can use a braid knot as well in order to create another kind of knot. You can adjust things like your radius, as well as your bevel depth in here. And then finally, 
the catenary curve option allows you to add a curve between two objects. So you can see how you can use this in order to create something that kind of hangs down. So if you want to create a curve between objects and you could add a bevel radius or something like that as well, you can use the catenary function in order to do that. And then once you've got that set the way you wanted, you can move this up and down just like this. So as you can see, this tool contains a number of different curve objects that's in here. Um, it was actually hard to go through all of them because there's so many. But one of the cool things about this is this is 100% free and it's included inside of Blender. All you have to do is enable it. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool. If you like this kind of video, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.